fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. His faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Hail Silver. Hey! Jack Ingram had fought in the War of the States. When the war was over, he was mustered out in Washington. Then, by rail and stagecoach, he set out for home in Texas. The trip had been a long and hard one, but it was over. And there was quite a crowd waiting in Sackville when the driver reined up. Oh, 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 oh. Here we are, soldier. This is Sackville. And for me, it's home. Hi there, Joe. Hi. Is Ingram on board? What do you mean, am I on board? <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you. Hi, Bill. Hello, John. Here, here, get out I got to see my boy, uh, Jack. Oh, gone to Jack. Welcome back. Dad. Oh, golly, it's swell to see you. Well, come on, don't waste time. I got the buckboard over here. All right. I'll see you later, fellas. Bill, drop over, will you? All right. <laughs> You're looking good, Dad. Uh, that's a darn fib, and you know it. I don't look good. Neither does any other cattleman. We're worried plumb sick. But get aboard the rig. We'll talk while we ride. Yeah. I'll handle the reins. Yeah. All set, Dad? Yep. Get up there. I was hoping the stage would be on time. Some cattlemen are meeting at our place. You know, son, this part of Texas is in bad shape. I heard something about your problem. You see, son, during the war, we were too short-handed. We couldn't call the cattle and we couldn't ship it. We couldn't do a thing but leave it alone and let it increase. Is the price are way down? Down? Why, son, there's no market at any price. What? There's a market in the north. Sure, there's a fine market there. That's why we're meeting. There'll uh, be a gent by the name of Tom Gannon at this meeting. He's got an idea of some sort. Where's he from? Somewhere north of here. I don't know what his plan is, but I hear it's a good one. Well, slap them horses, son. Come on, get up. When Lem and his son reached home, they found ranchers already assembled for the meeting. Lem joined his friends while Jack went to his room to wash away the dirt of travel. Then the young ex-soldier went to the ranch house living room to join the men. That's the reason I want Jack to Oh, here's Jack now. Well, Jack, meet the cattlemen. I know some of them, Dad. How are you, Hello, Bill. Hello. Hello. And this here is Tom Gannon. 
How do you do, Gannon? Well, glad to know you, Chuck. Uh, uh, son, Gannon's got a cracking fine idea. And uh, Hank Fenner's the only one against it. My idea is a simple one. Yep. You see uh, that map there, Jack? Sure. Now, uh, up here in the north, there's a fine market for cattle. The big problem is to get the cattle up there. You see, Jack, I too have cattle. My ranch is marked out uh, here on the map. It's on a direct line between you ranchers and the northern market. Meaning we'd have to cross your land to get to the market, is that it? To the left of my land are these mountains. They'd make a cattle drive in that direction too difficult. And uh, to the right, to the east. You can see how far around you'd have to go. Sure, we're going to cross Gannon's land. The only reason there's a problem about crossing my ranch is the canyon. A bad canyon without a bridge. According to this map, the canyon runs through your land. That's right. I own both sides of the canyon. If the canyon were bridged, your problem would be simple. Our problem would be simple. You see, Mr. Gannon has a lot of cattle on this side of the canyon there, and no way to get it north. I'd build a bridge, but I can't afford it. It wouldn't be worthwhile for my few thousand head. But it would be worthwhile if there were enough steers. Well, then why not all chip in and build the bridge? Hey, you see, Jack's got a good head. He put his finger on it right away. That's it's just the plan. That's I'm it. still set dead against it. Oh, that. now, Hank, don't be stubborn. You got no reason. No. I got a right to my opinion, and I'm against it. Why, Hank, what's wrong with Gannon's yeah. idea? Look, Gannon come all the way down here with that idea of his. Now, he must have some darn good reason for being so generous about letting our longhorns across his oh, land. Well. You're right, Fenner. You're exactly right. I thought so. I have a selfish motive. I did come a long way to get you men to chip in on a bridge. Why? Because I, too, need a bridge. I have cattle south of the canyon. I want to sell them. Well, that settles it. I'm for chipping in right now. Now, here's what cash I've got with me, and I'll get more when the bank opens in the morning. Carol, my cash. Here's mine. Me, too. I'll get mine when the bank opens. Now, come on, Fenner. What about you? Yeah, what about you, Hank? Well, boys, I've always been governed by the rule of the majority. That's the stuff, Hank. You all think it's a thing to do. I'm with you. Good. That makes it unanimous. That's fine. A short time after the men left... But, uh, what's the matter, son? You don't look too well pleased about the way the meeting turned out. I'm not, Dad. How's that? Tom Gannon is too slick-looking. He's too willing to be helpful. I'll bet he's got something up his sleeve. A week after the meeting at Lem Ingram's ranch, a crew of men were at work on the heavy bridge across the canyon. The Lone Ranger's nephew, Dan Reed, and his Indian friend, Tonto, had been following the southern ridge of the canyon for some distance. When they came upon the construction work, they reined up to watch. Oh, oh, Victor. Oh, boy. Oh, Tonto, see how many men are at work? They must be in a rush to get that bridge done. Ah, bridge here, plenty good thing. Isn't it slick the way they drop those timbers into place? Uh huh. Can't we watch them work for a little while? Well, maybe better we cut south and go on, Dan. Mask friend, meet us in camp tomorrow morning. Yeah, I suppose we'd better. Hey there! What? He's talking dust, Tonto. How'd you two like to earn some cash? We need more men on this bridge. Oh, golly. Well, plenty fella there now. Why, you need more. Mr. Gannon wants it done as soon as possible. We can use all the help we can get. Oh. Well, we travel south. Hey, suit yourself. Are you coming back this way? We don't know. Well, if you do, you won't find a shorter cut to the north than the Gannon Bridge. You might spread the word through the cattle country. All right. Just tell everyone you see that the bridge will be open and ready for business in another week's time. You say business? That's what I said, business. Mr. Gannon's not putting this bridge up for the fun. Everyone who uses it will pay. And it'll be worthwhile paying to get the cattle through to the north. Oh, I see. Uh, we'll tell the people we meet about it. Well, we go now. Come down. Right. Come on, Victor. Get him up. Come. The following morning, when Dan and Tonto joined the Lone Ranger in camp, they told about the Gannon Bridge. It was sure slick the way the engineers went at it. I'd like to watch them longer. Not right. Dan... Did you say there was to be a charge for the use of Gannon's bridge? Well, the man we talked to said that everyone would pay to use the bridge. He said Gannon hadn't built it just for fun. But Gannon didn't pay for that bridge. Well, oh, he didn't? No. It was paid for by the cattlemen around Sackville. Well, that's south of here. 
Well, that's where you went to see if anything were being done about the surplus cattle. Yes. I learned they have heard about the market in the north. The bridge on Gannon's property, they'll be able to move their cattle up there. But having paid for that bridge, they don't expect to pay toll to Gannon for its use. Well, maybe Gannon not charge those men. I'm going to find out. I might ride north to Gannon's bridge and see what I can learn. No, Dan, I'll go. But but you were supposed to meet someone this evening. Our friend Don Alfredo. We were to meet him in Four Corners. Well, I'm going to Gannon's bridge. You and Toto meet him. Stay in Four Corners with him and I'll join you as soon as possible. Ah, uh, we meet him. He's one of the most important men in Mexico. Dan, you'll be interested in some of his stories. I'll bet. If Gannon is on the level, I'll probably meet you sometime tomorrow morning. If he isn't, I'll be delayed a little longer. And what you do? If Gannon's planning to charge those cattlemen to cross the bridge they paid for, they'll have to know about it. Here, Silver. I'll saddle up for you. You'd better get a little rest, Dan. You have a long ride ahead. The afternoon was well advanced when Gannon rode up to the canyon and dismounted oh, beside his foreman to inspect the bridge. They made a lot of headway today, Mr. Gannon. Yes, I see they have. Of course, the fact that there was a footbridge helped a lot in lugging stuff on one side or the other. They'll finish on time, won't they? Sure they will. I'm not worried about it now. Then we'd better start signing up some extra men. More bridge workers? No, no. When the bridge is done, we'll need gunslingers. Hey, boss. Well... Turn around and take a look at the rider. The white horse is coming this way. Is that a mask on his face? It is, sir. I'm seeing things. It is a mask. Got your gun handy? Sure, I'm ready. Oh, Silver, oh, easy, boy. Oh. Easy. That's near enough, mister. Put your gun away. I didn't come here to make trouble. The gun stays where she is until we know your business. Easy, big I came here to talk to Gannon. That's my name. What's the mask for? What's the mask generally for? to hide my face. For the present, I'd just as soon you didn't know who I am. Dodging the law, mister? No. Gannon, if you expect to collect bridge toll from the Sackville ranches, you'll probably have trouble. I can handle any trouble that comes up. I guess they'll pay to get their cattle through to the north. What if they try to cross the bridge without paying? What if they do? You'll uh, need a few fighting men, won't you? Toll collectors, we might call them. Oh. Looking for work? What's the pay? Five dollars a day in cartridges? That's not very much. There won't be much to the job. Besides, mister, you won't be expected to go outside the law. You see, the law is on our side. Of course, you might be uncomfortable working on the side of the law. I'll think your proposition over. Meanwhile, I wonder if the Sackville ranchers are going to start out with the impression that they'll be able to cross this bridge without paying. By the time they've traveled this far, it'll be cheaper to pay than to hit the back trail. Yes, you're probably right, Gannon. Of course, if they were warned before they leave the Sackville neighborhood, it might be different. We wouldn't like to have them warned, mister. I can understand that. Eddie Silver? Hold on. Yes? Which way are you traveling? South. I'm sorry, stranger, but we'll have to argue that point. I wouldn't want you to go and warn those cattlemen. Are you going to try to prevent my leaving here? Something of the sort. <laughs> Aren't you assuming a lot of authority, Gannon? The shooting iron gives me the authority. And this one backs him up. Unbuckle, stranger. Unbuckle that belt and let her drop to the ground. Then you can unmask and we'll see what you look like. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. Gannon and his foreman, Jake, were determined that the masked man would have no opportunity to carry his information to the cattlemen. You heard what my boss said. Unbuckle that gun belt. You think you can capture me and get away with it? I don't want to hurt you, stranger. On the other hand, I'll go a long way to make sure those ranchers don't change their plans about going north. I'll drop the gun belt. Gannon, what if I refuse? What would you do about it? Jake knows what to do. I'd let daylight through you. With all the men working on the bridge over there as witnesses? Your mask. Mask man is generally looked on as a crook. The shooting of one isn't questioned very far. Especially when you're on my property. I wonder if you'd really shoot me. If you're not quick about taking that gun belt off, you'll find out. Uh, have either of you noticed my horse? What about your horse? When men hold guns on me, he moves into position... Ready to attack when I give the word. When you give the word. Adam Silver! Hey. Help my heart! Silver, charging from the side, struck the two men, knocking them off balance. In that instant, the Lone Ranger whipped out a gun and closed in. Jake fired, but an instant too late. The masked man's bullet got there first, creasing the foreman's gun arm. Then the Lone Ranger's fist found Gannon's unguarded jaw. That'll hold you. Easy, big fella. Adam Silver! You, will you... Where's my gun? Where'd I drop my gun? Get him, boss. Get him. Yeah, that ornery. Uh, no use. He's too far. My arm, boss. He greased my arm. Yes, and nearly smashed my jaw. But I'll get him, Jake. I'll get that mask, man. It's the last thing I do. Jack Ingram and his father were but two of the many ranchers who were covered with sweat and dust, but happy in the action of a roundup. Hey, Dad. Yeah? That man coming here, he isn't one of the herders. Huh? But, but look, he's masked. Hey there, stranger, what's oh, that mask oh, mean? Steady, big fellow. I'm looking for the owner of those longhorns. That doesn't answer my question. Where are we, Jack? Maybe you talk to him. We own some of the critters, mister. Why? Are you driving them across Tom Gannon's bridge? You bet we are. And they'll be men enough to meet any gang that has ideas of interfering with us, you savvy? Did you help pay for that bridge? Yes. Why? Gannon plans to charge you a toll for every head of cattle. What? Why, that dirty dog. Why, he even... can't do that. We gave him the money to build the bridge. Well, he's planning to do it. You better check up. I don't believe it. All right, suit yourself. You've been warned. One silver! Leaving the vicinity of Sackville, the Lone Ranger joined his friends in camp near the town of Four Corners, which was located about halfway between Sackville and the Gannon property. Don Alfredo, a gentleman from Mexico and a friend of the Lone Ranger, had been with Dan and Tonto for several days. Oh, Silver, oh, easy, steady, big fella. Where is Tonto, senor? Ah, como se va, amigo? Oh. Very sorry to keep you waiting so long, Don Alfredo. Oh, this is nothing, amigo. Time... I lots of it. Hey, have you been up near the Gannon place all this time? <laughs> no, Dan. After leaving Gannon's place, I rode south to Sackville. What? Then you passed through here. Yes, I didn't stop because I was in a hurry. I told the cattlemen that Gannon planned to charge the use of the bridge. Uh, Dan and Tonto have told me of the plans to move the cattle north. Now what will the cattlemen do? I think they'll move their cattle in spite of what I told them. They must. There's nothing else they can do if they hope to find a market. And they will pay the toll at the bridge? I doubt it, Don Alfredo. They'll fight first. Oh, and Senor Gannon, what of him? He'll fight back. He's hiring gunmen for the purpose. Oh, perhaps the ranchers will do well to pay the toll. They spent their money to build the bridge. There's no reason why they should pay to use it. Oh, Senor. I meet you here to ask you to take me to your governor so I might negotiate. I think I have the problem. Yeah. It's nothing. Please forget my problem. You are the greater one. I'll see that you get to the governor, Don Alfredo. But I'd like to stay in this vicinity until we see how the cattle drive turns out. Golly, I wish there was something we could do. Well, nothing we can do. I've been thinking. I... Perhaps there is something. It was late afternoon, two days later... Jack Ingram and his father had ignored the warning of the Lone Ranger and rode at the head of a vast herd of longhorns, the combined stock of a dozen ranchers. They reined up at Gannon's bridge. Gannon was there to meet them. 
flanked by heavily armed men. Well, again, Andy. Well, here we are, right on schedule. Glad to see you, Ingram. There's all the longhorns. Well, I've got the tally sheets here. We'll count them as they cross. The toll is two bits ahead. What? What's that? What toll? What do you mean? I'll take it in cash or cattle. I'll allow a dollar and a half for each long. Man, and you took our money to build this bridge. You said you had cattle of your own you wanted to move north. Sure I have. It's on the East Range. I'll move it after yours is gone. The understanding was that we could use the bridge. No, you can't. I didn't say you could use it free. You can't do this. The sheriff says I'm within my legal rights. Sheriff. All those men on the north bank and these alongside of me are sworn in as deputy sheriffs. If you fight, you'll fight lawmen. Hey, boss, you can it. Yeah, what is it, Jake? There's some gents to speak to you. Think it over, Ingram. Discuss it with your friends and let me know. I'll be back. Why, of all the double... One hundred yards north of the bridge, two men who looked like prosperous Mexican ranchers awaited Tom Gannon. Don Alfredo was just what he appeared to be. The other man was the Lone Ranger, wearing clothing borrowed from the Mexican. His unmasked face had been darkened with stain, and his horse Silver, covered with the dust and mud of travel, was hardly recognizable. Did you gents want to see me? Senor Gannon, I am uh, Don Alfredo of Mexico. Oh, sure enough. I've heard about you. I guess you're about as big a rancher as there is to be found south of the border. Well, this is my friend who will speak for me. Senor, we see all the livestock over south of the canyon. Well, you have a mucho. You've been looking for cattle to buy? Oh, I can always use good cattle in Mexico. It will be good to be back home after so long a time. You're uh, coming down from the north, huh? Si, senor. Been up there long? Oh, much longer than we had planned, senor. I had thought to take back with me to Mexico some stock from the States. Hmm. How much do you figure to pay? Well, north of here, a good steer bring up for a $50. Oh, that is a little more than I would like to pay. Perhaps if I were to buy several thousand heads... Several thousand? I uh, suppose you'd be willing to go as high as $40? It is possible. Uh, just excuse me a minute till I speak to my foreman. Si, si. Come over here, Jake. Yeah. Hey, they've been up north so long they don't know cattle can be bought south of here for about $2 a head. You'll find out soon enough when they talk to Ingram and the rest of the ranchers on the other side of the bridge. Boss, they think you own all that cattle. Listen, Jake. Here's a chance for me to unload all my stock over on the East Range. Not while those ranches are close by. Especially if the Mexicans cross the bridge and look that livestock over. Listen, Jake. You take those two up to the house and entertain them. I'll get all the other stock out of the way. I go on and do as I say. Keep the Mexicans busy. I'm going across the bridge. All right. Senor Alfredo! Si, senor. The boss wants me to take you and your friend up to the ranch house. <laughs> Gannon looked back when he reached the south end of the bridge. To his satisfaction, the men in Mexican attire were moving toward the ranch house with Jake. How to get rid of the others. He advanced toward a group of ranchers that included Jack Ingram and his father. Gents, I've thought things over. Maybe I was wrong. After all, you men did pay for the bridge. Go ahead, move your stock. What? Without paying toll? Yes. Take them over the bridge and run them north. You'd better do it right away before I change my mind. You hear that, boys? Do it in. All right, let's get going. Come on, boys. The Lone Ranger, disguised as a Mexican, and Don Alfredo had been in Gannon's house for some time listening to Gannon tell story after story and otherwise play the part of a host. They could also hear the movement of a great herd of cattle. When the last of the hoofbeats faded into the distance, the Lone Ranger said, That was a lot of cattle being moved, senor. Yep, a lot of it. It's moving north. Yours? Oh, no, no. It's ranchers to the south that are taking it to north of the panhandle. Oh, we might have dealt with those ranch shadows. Oh, you wouldn't want none of that livestock. It's gaunted from lean pasture. Now, as to the stock you want. Oh, there is a matter of price, senor. <laughs> sure, I'll make that right. Just you wait till you see what I can sell you for about $40 a head. $4 a head? It is too much. Four? I said 40 <laughs> I said $4 a head was too much. What do you think, Don Alfredo? Oh, I would say... Uh... Two dollars is a good price. Oh, uh, wait. Hold on a minute. Two dollars. That is much cattle south of here near the border. But you two said you'd pay forty dollars. Senor, you misunderstood. We said it was possible. 
Well, perhaps another time when the market she's improved. But now... Oh, no, no, Senor Gale. Boy, you... Hey, boss. Hey, you two hombres. What about him, Jake? I was looking their horses over. Underneath the dirt and dust of that man's horse, I saw something I recognized. What do you mean? You remember that masked man who creased my arm and cracked you on the chin? Yes. Well, his horse is outside. What? That's right, Gannon. Who are you? That's the voice. The masked man. I'll fix him. This time it'll be different. Senor. Don't. Uh, you. I'll fix you. And again... That's it. Are you? You. Gannon, when you saw a chance to unload your cattle at a high price, you were quick to get the ranches out of the way before we could learn the true value of cattle. My men are coming. They heard the gunfire. They'll get you, too. We'll have to catch us first. Come on, Alfredo. The gunmen. Here they come. This way, Alfredo. Get to the horses. I can't run any faster. Be all right when we reach the horses. Those men are on foot. They are shooting. Can't shoot straight while they're running to catch us. Now oh, the horses at last. Easy, big fella. All right, get going. Get up there. Come on. When Gannon saw the Lone Ranger and Alfredo right away, he knew that they'd made good their escape. He closed the door with a heavy sigh. Ah, no use, Jake. By the time my men get horses, those two will be in the hills. Two cracks on the jaw. Yeah, look at me. Both arms brushed by bullets. Oh, that doggone fast-shooting mask, man. I... Hey, what's that, Ken? A bullet. Here, where he was sitting. Oh, if only we'd found out sooner that he was a mask man, dressed up like a Mexican rancher. If only we'd found out sooner that he carried bullets like this, made of silver. I'd have suspected a trick to get those ranchers across my bridge. Jake, the deal I got was typical. It was just what I'd have expected from the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle and directed by Charles D. Livingston. Tonight's story was written by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. (laughs) 